we actually found a very interesting correlation between the check size and the amount of com and the confidence that an investor has in a down you know cycle and so i think that um those who trust you those who were there um with you through i'm not going to say that there was an up and down market you know, in the past few years it was more up than down there was a short period of semi panic when covid hit um and and i think that when investors understand that they can you know if they feel that they can trust you they tend to write bigger and bigger checks. And so one of the metrics we're looking at is repeated investors. And I think we have about 78. I have uh, my director of investor relations um, here, Jeanette Robinson. She probably knows that number I, off the top of my head. I don't remember it quite you know, exactly, but 78 or 75%. And that says a lot. And so when you have most of your investors re are repeated investors, then when they feel uncomfortable, they can actually have a conversation with you. And that's key. So back to, you know, when COVID hit in March of 2020, we actually called each and every investor and we told them, OK, here's what's going on. We don't know exactly how this is all going to, you know, play out, but this is the plan. And, you know, we, we, we don't know nobody, nobody in, you know, in history went through a pandemic managing assets, at least not someone that I know personally. And so it, it helps them, it helped them um, increase their trust. And so we're actually seeing a very interesting um, phenomenon. So we have investors that have been sitting on the sidelines because they thought that interest rates um, were too low and prices, you know, uh, property prices were too high. They were sitting on the sidelines for, for a while now thinking that prices are in you know, are, are uh, pretty much uh, uh, too, you know, it's too expensive. And now they're actually doubling down and writing really big checks. They think this is the right time, um, you know, to enter the market. And it's interesting that they've waited for prices to go down. But I always, you know, I explained this is not 2008, where if you have a million dollars cash, you can buy five homes in cash, then wait a year to refinance. OK, you've done a great deal. Yes, prices now are lower because cap rates have, you know, expanded, but the debt is not as good as it was three months ago. And now we're not lo looking at 65 or 70 percent LTV. We're looking at 47, 52, 55 if you're percent LTV, if you're lucky, and that offsets any gain you could have made in addition to what you, you, know, you could have made three months ago. So we're actually looking at very similar um, yield to what we've seen a few months ago. But yes, it's a little bit riskier in one respect because, uh, and that's what we, you know, explain to our investors, it's a bit riskier now um, because we know where we're going. We know that the, you know, it, the rents are not going to keep increasing forever. On the other hand, it's actually safer to invest now because you know what to look for. Six months ago, we all knew that a, a you know 10, 12 year of, of expansion has to end some at some point. We didn't know when, and it, you know from where we're gonna get you know um, the, the where, what, what's gonna be the source. Now we know that the debt is what you need to pay attention to. So when you're underwriting, you can make sure that you underwrite um, and and basically make sure that the risk is not too high. Um, and so when it comes to investors, I would say most of them are still investing. It may take them a little bit longer. They want to see that, you know, what the feds are going to say on, you know, the meeting on Wednesday, they're going to raise their, um, you know, rates again. But generally speaking, investors are, are still, you know, bullish, especially when it comes to multifamily.